Can they actually measure food noise? Let's talk about food noise. It may be a new term to you, but have you ever heard someone say it was like a switch flipped in my brain after I started one of these new GLP-1 medications or something like the cravings didn't just go away. They never actually even got a chance to show up. <laughs> this is probably one of my favorites from the community. Actually, this one is I finally have space in my head to think about something that isn't food. <laughs> that's definitely been my case at times with these medications, and that's food noise. And what if I told you we might actually be able to see it happening in the brain? So for those of us living with obesity or binge eating tendencies, food noise isn't just this catchphrase that's caught on. It's, it's actually a constant low-level hum that happens in the brains of a lot of people living with obesity. You're thinking about food, even if you're not hungry, you're fantasizing about what fast food place to go to next. And you're always negotiating with yourself. It's extremely exhausting, but most of the time we've only had our words to describe what we've been feeling inside until now, because a new study published in nature medicine used MRI scans to look directly into the brains of people taking terzepatide. And what they saw lines up almost exactly with what people have been describing all over uh, the internet, all over on the pen comments and chat rooms, etc. This was a six week randomized clinical trial, and it looked at 114 adults without diabetes, but with overweight or obesity, and they split them into three groups. One got placebo, poor souls that got placebo. One got liraglutide, and then the third arm got terzepatide. They didn't just measure weight loss. They actually measured food cravings. They tracked eating behavior, and here's the kicker. They did brain scans before and after these medications using MRI. So participants were shown pictures of highly palatable foods. Think cake and candy bars and French fries, whatever you can imagine, I'm sure. And the researchers watched which part of the brains lit up. At week three in the terzepatide group, those lights, they started to go dim. And here's actually where this whole thing gets wild. So there were four key brain regions that were actively being looked at here, and they actively dropped off with the use of terzepatide. The first was the orbitofrontal cortex. Now, this is where food reward lives. It's like where we get that feeling like, I want to eat what I'm looking at. Then there was the medial frontal gyrus. This is responsible for decision-making, impulse control, and self-directed thoughts. Thirdly, the cingulate gyrus. This is linked to emotional conflict, reward sensitivity, and cravings. And finally, in the hippocampus. And this is actually where your brain stores memories of food as comfort or pleasure. So you can start to imagine these are the parts of your brains that were lit up when people were activated by food they wanted to eat. And these are the places where food noise probably lives. And terzepatide made them all quieter. So when people say it was like something just shut off in my brain, it's not just a metaphor. It actually might be literal. These weren't people that were just trying harder or just buckling down and having more uh, fortitude to, to not eat. It wasn't discipline. It was biology. And it's not that they suddenly got stronger. It's that their brains were reacting differently. They could measure it. The donut didn't look as loud. The drive to eat wasn't as strong. And the food noise quieted down. They didn't call it that in the paper, but I will. <laughs> this is probably what food noise could look like on an MRI, on a brain scan. And it's the strongest visual proof that we have seen yet. Terzepatide reduced food cravings for everything except fruits and vegetables, and it dropped caloric intake by over 500 calories at a single lunch. It lowered impulsiveness scores and it made people feel fuller sooner. They weren't just eating less, they were wanting less, and their brain scans confirmed it. 
amazing. The hardest part with living obesity isn't always just the extra weight that we carry. It's the noise. And if you're like me, if you've ever felt that switch flip in your head because of these medications, this study might be the first time that we can point to something and say, yeah, that that's what I was trying to describe. So let me ask you, what's your story with food noise? Is it something that these medications help to highlight that you were dealing with because you only noticed it once it was gone? Drop a comment, share your story, and let's have a conversation about food noise because I think this is something the world has a hard time wrapping their mind around. And I think many people could see a lot of help with something like the use of terzepatide. Don't forget to do all the things. Subscribe. You can check out the full write-up about this at obesity.news. And don't forget to sign up for email alerts while you're there. That's how you can stay in touch with our content. You can always count on On The Pen to keep covering the science because I firmly believe that when we understand what's happening in the brain, we stop blaming the person living inside it.